So there's gravy up. I'm out on the uh, 2022 Honda CRF 450RX. We're out in the desert. I've got my boys with me and Tyler and his son. They're up ahead. I told them to go on up ahead while I got the drone out. What's going on, everybody? I don't script these voiceovers. Every once in a while, I start recording and I'm not talking enough, and so then I have to just come back and do a little bit of a voiceover. This is the second time I've ridden the bike. It's the Honda Sierra 450RX. It's been a while since I've had a bike that made me want to ride and get out and get excited, and this bike does that for me. So I don't know if it's just because it's been six years since I've had a 450, or this is the first brand new full-size Honda that I've had on the channel, but I'm absolutely loving the bike. I think it looks amazing, especially out here in the desert. Tyler rode it a couple times and I could see it from a distance and I'm like, that bike looks so sharp. This red looks so sharp against, against the sand and the desert that we were in here. And uh, I just, I think the bike looks amazing. It sounds amazing. It runs amazing. And I haven't even been messing with like the engine modes yet. One of the funny things about riding out here is you can't really ever kind of open it up all the way because there's all these washes where you kind of come down like that one right there. You, you go, you can't see from your vantage point, like right here, you can't see what's over any of these rises and you will fall off of a 10 to 30 foot cliff. Uh, all the time like it's just you can't see what's on the other side of any of these little ridges <clears throat> or any of these little dips for that matter some of them are a foot deep and two feet wide and some of them are six feet deep and ten feet wide and so you just kind of you just kind of have to be careful and go through so I wanted to show you a little bit of what that looks like from the air it's a totally different perspective it's like Kyle why don't you open it up more well because from the ground like this on the on the point of view camera you can't really tell and there's so many of these washes that just get cut out from rainstorms where it's like oh my gosh you can really injure yourself but at this point it took a while for the Sky DO2 to kind of sink up to the beacon and I'm just trying to catch up to Tyler and the boys and so here in just a second, I think I will have caught them. And then Tyler's just going to kind of wave me on. And since the drone is in the air, I just, I don't really say much to him. And I just keep going. I'm also using Cardo Pack Talk Bold uh, headsets to keep in touch with my boys. So I've got Case and Connor with me. Um, uh, Tyler has his son Cade with him. We're, they're all on 85. So uh, the Cade and Connor are on KTM 85 SX bikes and case is on a Husqvarna TC 85 and uh, yeah it was is interesting because case had had he has like an expander thing in his mouth and he's in so much pain with his mouth and then he almost broke his hand the other day <laughs> jumping a, a pedal bike in our driveway a jump that their dad me made him uh, so he was kind of struggling there but he just gutted it out and just did it but back to the Honda this thing uh, and again like okay I need to, I've given so much, I've talked so much down on 450s because everyone goes out there and buys them. And for most of the riding that I do, most of the riding that a lot of people do, a 450 is too much bike. But I will say, you get out in the right situations like here in the desert, and this 450 was amazing. Especially, there was a hill climb that we did at the end. I, I probably won't get into it in this video, but there was a hill climb that we did, and the 450 was absolutely incredible in some of these places. And it doesn't wear me out as much as it used to. I think a lot of that is because my technique has gotten a little bit better. Um, but yeah, here we, we found this little hill climb. Look, you see I stalled it right there. It's easy to stall. It's, it's not a two stroke. But then we'll get the boys up and get them to come down this little hill. It doesn't look like it's that steep, but it's pretty steep right here. There's a little bit of a drop off. And when you're looking at it, it's like, oh boy. It doesn't look steep from the drone footage, but it's steep. It gave the boys all pause, and eventually we coast them to come down like this. I think you can, you can roll up from right there, Connor. Hey, you can do it, buddy. You can just roll straight off of it. I'm positive. What's that drone? <laughs> You coming, buddy? Hey, watch the drone here, okay?
Hey, you can do it, buddy. You can just roll straight off of it. I'm positive. So there's a ton more of this ride that uh, you won't see in this video. Um, but overall, I absolutely, lo I absolutely loved the Honda out here in the desert. It was a ton of fun. And I'm really, really looking forward to getting the 250 version of this bike. I mean, honestly, I, I love the 254 strokes. Uh, a lot of you guys that watch the channel know that I'm kind of a sucker for a, for a good 254 stroke. The, the stability that they have, the, how light they feel, the little amount of engine braking that they have, and just the cornering ability is pretty, is pretty unmatched, you know, on, on when you're riding a 254 stroke. But it'll be fun to take this bike the 450 and the 250 and just go to several on several different rides where we're just going back and forth on the bikes and just see what we can learn because it's one of the things that I have seen you know give me the most amount of perspective is when we're able to to ride back to back you know your buddy's got a bike you got a bike ride them back to back and if they're set up the same which I'm gonna have the same tires on them you know set them up with the same amount of sag all that type of stuff then you can really get a determination of what you're actually feeling. Because if your frames are the same, if your bars are the same, if your wheels and tires and all that stuff is the same, then what you're feel then the little nuances that you're feeling, the differences in how the bike wants to lay over, how it wants to stand up, how it wants to be stable, if it wants to go straight through something, if it wants to be able to corner or corner more easily, all that is going to come down to the actual engine platform. Now, a lot of you guys know, some of you guys know that I'm a big time Supercross fan. I love to watch Supercross. I geek out on that. I don't watch a lot of other, I don't watch a lot of off-road related or desert related content on YouTube, but I do watch Supercross type stuff. And I know the mechanics and test riders are always talking about how, you know, they can take one engine, you know, hanger or engine mount and change it out, you know, change out this thing or use a different piece of material here in an engine hanger and or, or a brace and it'll totally change the bike and and i've always wondered if if they're just like making that stuff up and maybe the top riders can tell and and they probably can the people who've been doing this since they were a fetus and now they're 30 years old and, they, and they've ridden all these different bikes and they put in you know hours and hours and hours every week of their life of testing bikes maybe they can tell the difference between an engine mount for me i'm just looking forward to being able to tell the differences between the 250 motor and the 450 motor and seeing which is good in which situations because you know the 254 stroke out here would have been amazing as well it would have been absolutely amazing there's only one place where the 450 in my opinion would even be a benefit uh and that is that hill climb that we that i showed you just a teeny bit of drone footage that we kind of get i guess it's at the end of the trail but it's in the middle of our ride um, that's the place where the 450 is definitely going to give you an advantage over a smaller displacement motor because you've got so much power on top. On that, tr on that <clears throat> hill climb, I could just shift into third at the bottom and just hold it open and jump off a little step up. And, you know, on most of the other bikes that I've had, I've taken up that hill, you're going to be shifting, or at least it's going to be laboring harder. On the 450, it wasn't doing, it wasn't even laboring at all. At this point, the uh, drone has lost. The drone is getting down to such a low amount of battery that it decided it's just going to chill, and then it's going to go into an auto land. This is a Skydio 2. I've had it for, I don't know, a year and a half. You've seen it on the channel here and there. It's one of the ways that I can get some decent amount of drone footage, and I get more footage with the Skydio than I do my Mavics. I've, got several, I've had several different drones over the years. I've got three, four different drones right now, but... Um, recently I've been using the, the Skydio a lot just because I can get bang for buck. I can get a lot of footage off of oh, it, off of it. it and I can just go ride for 10 minutes at a time or 12 or 15 minutes at a time. And then just a lot of times it'll follow me if I, if I have it like a little bit higher. Sometimes if I, if I get it down into the trees, it'll, it'll kind of get stuck. But anyway, that's what I've got for you guys. Much more on this bike coming up and I uh, hope everyone's having a great day. Leave a single track. Thanks.